All right, time to talk about simplifying formula references using named ranges and tables. So getting a little bit more complex here. This is a three-star productivity tip, a little bit more advanced, a little bit more nuanced than some of the more basic tips that we've covered up to this point. But basically what we're gonna talk about here is how to use either named ranges or tables compared to raw cell ranges like A1 through A10 to simplify our formula references. So for instance, let's say we're looking at data like this, where we've got a holiday table containing holiday labels for each date, and then some sort of transactional uh, record as well. And we basically want to populate a column like column C here that says, given the date, look up the holiday, and if it's a holiday, return the name, otherwise return a none. Now, rather than referencing E2 through F16 in our formula, we can format that holiday table itself as a proper table and give it a name like holidays. And once we've done that, we can simply reference that table name, holidays, right there within our lookup table. And this not only makes the formula more readable to end users, but it also serves a few very important benefits. Number one, that table will now automatically ingest new rows of data. So if we wanna add a holiday to that list, we don't have to redefine the cell range, we can simply tack it on and it will be absorbed into the table named holidays. And then we'll also have some additional table specific benefits like formatting and filtering options and the ability to write more efficient calculated columns versus the A1 style cell formulas that we're used to writing. So a couple common use cases here. Number one, replacing those raw cell references is a great way to make your formulas more readable and easier to interpret. Second, you can convert chart source data to a table or a named range to enable automatic updates. So instead of sitting a chart on top of a static data range, you can point it to a dynamic table. And last but not least, preparing data for analysis with Excel BI tools like the Data Model or Power Pivot. So let's jump into our Pro Tips workbook and see what this actually looks like in Excel. All right, so in your Pro Tip workbook, head to the Named Ranges and Tables tab. It's one of the last blue productivity tabs. You can either scroll to it manually, but remember you've always got that table of contents in the first tab where you can simply jump to the link and land straight at the demo. So here we've got that same kind of demo that we introduced uh, just moments ago where we've got uh, transactional records with dates, you know, a certain volume of transactions. And we wanna populate this holiday label, column C, by looking up the date within this little lookup table here and returning the name of the USA holiday. And we can use a number of different formulas to do that. We can use index and match. In this case, I'm gonna use simple VLOOKUP formula. So we're gonna say equals VLOOKUP and the value we're looking up is the date in our transactional row and the table array. This is where we're looking for that date and where we're gonna to try to retrieve the holiday label. So if we just kind of go the standard route and select the raw cell range, E2 through F16. Go ahead and press F4 to fix that reference in. Comma over to the next formula argument, the column index. So where does the holiday label live? Well, in this case, it lives in the second column in our range. And then last argument here, we want false or exact match. So arrow down, tab it in, close the parenthesis and press enter. And there you have it, January 1st is New Year's Day. We apply this down, what we'll see is an error, an NA for any non-holiday date, and we should see the holiday name populate otherwise. So little quick tip here, if you wanna get rid of these NAs, we're gonna cover this in another tip as well, but I'm gonna give you a little bonus here. Just wrap that entire function in if error. So if you get an error, when you do this entire VLOOKUP, comma, value if error, we're just gonna put the word none in quotes, close the parenthesis and press enter. I'm gonna apply that down. I know I went through that very quickly. Now at this point we have our kind of raw cell reference here, which isn't very helpful to end users and it's not dynamic, right? So if I add rows here, our VLOOKUP is continuing to stop at row 16 and it will have no idea that we just added data to rows 17, 18, 19, et cetera. And we'll have that same problem even if we name this range something like holidays. 
So let's go ahead and select E2 through F16, that same range that we referenced. And to turn this into a named range, it's as simple as clicking the name box to the left of the formula bar and typing in a name right here. So we call this holidays and press enter. And now back in my formula, I can actually just go ahead and delete the table array and start typing holidays. And you'll see that it's populated right here with a special icon. That means it's a named range in my workbook. And I can press tab to lock that in. You can see that it matched up with our cells there and press enter, double click to apply that formula down. And now at least we've improved the readability of the formula, but we haven't quite solved the problem because you now if I add another date here, 9-1-2014, which is obviously Chris's birthday, very important date. And then we scroll through to September here in our transactional table. You'll notice that 9-1 is still listed as no holiday, which is very sad. And that's because even though we named this range holidays, the range was defined to end at row 16. So let's go ahead and delete my birthday. We'll add it back in in just a moment. The other approach, which I actually prefer, is to now format this range as a table. So easiest way to do that, just select any cell within it, control T. Yes, we've got headers. That looks like the correct range, press okay. There we go. And now we've got a table containing our holidays. We go into our table tools tab, give it a name, just like we named our named range consisting of cells. Let's call it holidays two, because we can't give it the same name. Press okay. And now we'll go ahead back into our formula. And now if I delete the S, you'll see I now have two options here, holidays and holidays two. That's my table version. You can tab that one in, press enter and apply it down. Now here's where the good stuff comes in. Now if I go ahead and add that additional holiday, 9-1-2014, Chris's birthday, see how it formatted it to kind of pull it into the table? And as we scroll down all the way to September, check it out, 9-1-2014, Chris's birthday. So I didn't have to modify the actual uh, definition of the named range. By formatting it as a table, it automatically ingested that new row of information. And then like I hinted at before, we've got some other benefits of tables. You know, one thing is that we've got these banded rows, makes it nice and readable. Um, another is that if you actually select a table and scroll down, note how the headers kind of stuck there. They froze right there in our column labels, um, which is great, especially when you have very large tables uh, that might be hundreds or thousands of rows long. Um, so two little benefits to tables, but really that big one is automatically adding data as it gets placed in new rows. So there you have it. That's your crash course on simplifying formula references with named ranges and tables.